Make sure you're watching this video in 4K resolution so you don't lose too much detail from YouTube's compression. Hi there everyone and welcome to this scientific shootout between the Walksnail Avatar HD FPV system and the DJI HD FPV system. Now in this video we're going to be looking at some video captured from both of these systems on the same quad at the same time in the same flight so that we can directly compare the image quality that you see in the goggles between the two systems. And to collect this data, I have used this rig here, which I'm calling the Biclops, because it's a, a Cyclops, but it has two eyes. And I've put the DJI FPV system with the DJI camera in the, uh, in the main camera position. And then I've made this mount for the Walksnail Avatar HD FPV camera which I've mounted here where the GoPro would normally go and then I have the DJI Air unit in the back of this quad and then at the front I have the Walksnail Avatar VTX mounted underneath the the main plate here and what this means is that we can collect video from the same flight at the same time record it and then look at it side by side to compare the image quality between the two systems. And when we look at these systems side by side, we can see some really interesting features that I'm excited to talk to you about. So let's jump right into it. So I wanna start by showing you DVR recorded on the aircraft. So this is before any transmission is taking place. On the left, we have DJI DVR recorded on the air unit in 1080p60, and on the right, DVR recorded on the avatar air unit at 1080p60. And we can see immediately that the DJI system has a little bit more to work with in terms of detail and clarity of colors and that sort of thing. That's provided by that DJI FPV camera, which is still the benchmark for image quality in this space. And I think that this is an area where Walksnail and Cadex and all the other manufacturers still need to, to catch up a little bit, finding those really high quality sensors to get the, the best possible image to start with and the best possible colors and detail before you start going through the compression and transmission. Now we've seen what the systems have to work with, let's look at how the transmission affects things. And we have the DJI system on the left and the Walksnail system on the right here. And I've overlaid their SRT files with the bit rate and everything over the top. And you can see as we take off, immediately we do start to see some differences in the way that the systems are handling the, uh, the bit rate that they have available. Now at 25 megabits a second and 120 frames a second, you're really pushing the encoder to its limit because it has to get the most amount of data through the most amount of frames, but it only has 25 megabits. And so you can see that both encoders are preferentially losing detail in different areas. And the DJI system is losing detail on the left-hand edge. You can see focus mode is coming into play there, and we're losing quite a lot of detail in that left-hand side of the image. Whereas the walk snail system is preferentially losing detail in mainly the grass. And that's a real difference between the two systems because the DJI system is preserving the detail in the grass in the center of the image at the expense of everything on the left-hand side of the image, whereas the walk snail system is preserving the detail in the sky and the foliage at the expense of the detail in the grass. You might have noticed in that clip that the two videos started perfectly in sync and then over time drifted apart as the clip went on and the DJI clip finished sooner than the walk snail clip. Well, I noticed this too, and as far as I can tell, in the 120 frames per second clips, the DJI goggle DVR is dropping more frames over the course of the clip than the walk snail system. And so that's why the two videos fall out of sync. Now, it didn't seem to be so much of a problem at 60 FPS, but it was quite noticeable at 120. So make of that what you will but they both have the same bitrate settings, the same transmission power. So um, it's an apples to apples comparison. All right, so let's look at a freeze frame from that video so that we can dive a little more deeply into what's going on and the differences between the two systems. You can see that the DJI system 
has focus mode acting quite strongly. And focus mode is removing all of the detail and heavily compressing the image on the edge of the frame. So we're losing all the detail in the grass, all the detail in the foliage, a lot of detail in the sky. It's all just being wiped out. And then if we look at the center of the image, more detail is being preserved here. You can see we've got quite a lot of detail in the grass down here, which is really nice. A lot of detail in the foliage and some detail in the sky, although there's definitely less detail in the sky on the DJI system compared to the walk snail system. If we come over and look at the walk snail system now, you can see that it's decided that this area here is what it's going to compress and where it's going to lose information. So all of that, uh, that grass here has all been kind of compressed and we've lost a lot of detail, but it's kept a lot of detail in this foliage here, a lot of detail in these trees, and actually a lot of detail in the sky as well. There's a lot of detail in the sky on the walk snail system compared to the DJI system here. And one could argue that that detail in the sky might have been better spent on some of this uh, foliage down here, some of this grass and some of this foliage here. So I think this is an area where the walk snail system could really take a step forward and if they can adjust the encoder settings to lose a bit more detail in the sky, keep a little bit more detail in the grass and implement this focus mode. Focus mode is a fantastic idea from a human perspective because we focus mainly and our vision is most acute in the center of where we're looking. And our peripheral vision is less acute, it's blurry. And also when you're flying, there's motion blur on the edges as well, which tends to mean that you don't really see so much detail at the edge of the image anyway. So if walk snail implement a similar approach with a focus mode where they compress heavily the edge of the image to save more data for the middle, I think we'll see a big step up in image quality. If you're interested in the latency between the two systems, which is a really important parameter for freestyle flying and racing, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I'm gonna be using my high-speed camera to do a latency shootout between these two systems very, very soon. And if you're subscribed, you'll get a notification so you'll be able to see that information as soon as it becomes available. Okay, so now let's look at the DJI system 720p60 and the walk snail system 1080p60, both at 25 megabits a second. And immediately you can see, I think, an improvement in detail in the walk snail image. Um, you do still see some compression artifacts and when the walk snail system does choose to compress the image, it tends to compress the grass. Uh, first. So that's kind of the most visible area of compression. With the DJI system, we still see focus mode cutting in occasionally at the edge of the image, blurring out the edge of the image, preserving more detail from the center. But overall, the walk snail system, I think where it does capture the fine detail, that 1080p resolution is making a bit of a difference and we are seeing an improvement. So if we look at another freeze frame now and we have the DJI system on the left at 720p, and we have the walk snail system on the right at 1080. And I think it's pretty clear that the walk snail system is able to capture more detail in the foliage here than the DJI system is, just because it's got that higher resolution. Now, when we look down at the grass, again, you can see DJI focus mode coming in and we're losing detail in the grass at the edge of the image and the foliage here and the walk snail system, we're losing detail in the grass kind of all over, and it's not preferring the, the center of the image in the same way that the DJI system does. But definitely the 1080p60, there is more detail in this image in the parts that, that haven't been compressed compared to what's available in the 720p image of the DJI system. Okay, so here's both systems at 720p, 120 frames a second, but now we're at 50 megabits per second transmission. And I think that this really helps the walk snail system out a lot. 
that higher frame rate really benefits from the um, the extra bit rate and I can see that there's quite a bit less kind of smearing in the grass at 50 megabits per second compared to what we see at uh, 25 megabits per second. The DGI system you can still see that focus mode coming in and the edge of the image blurring which helps preserve more detail in the center so it blurs quite badly there but the detail in the center is preserved whereas the walk snail system tends to blur the grass out first and keep detail in the sky and the the foliage instead so again that's that's just an encoder setting that's an area where walk snail can improve the firmware just to maybe blur the sky out first or blur the edge of the image out first rather than the rather than the grass because as an FPV pilot, you know, you are really relying on detail in the ground to help with things like judging your altitude and judging your speed. And finally, we're going to look at eye candy mode. So this is 50 megabits per second, 720p60 on the DJI system, 1080p60 on the avatar system. And here, I think both systems do really well at capturing and preserving a lot of detail. Um, definitely, I think the avatar system with its slightly higher resolution, when, when you have really good signal and you have um, an image that's not moving too much, there's not too much motion, the avatar system definitely pulls ahead. The DJI system probably does a slightly better job when you've got fast motion but again, mainly it's leaning on that focus mode, I think. It's, that's blurring out the edge of the image, saving bit rate. It's putting more detail in the middle. And I don't see any reason why Walksnail couldn't implement this type, of, uh, this type of approach. And so then you would get really, really good detail, really crisp 1080p detail in the middle of the frame. And you'd lose some detail at the edge, which you're probably not focusing on when you're flying. Before we jump into the conclusions, I'd like to ask you for your support. Unlike other larger creators, I didn't get any sponsorship for any of this avatar equipment. I had to buy it all myself, and I wouldn't have been able to do that without the generous support of my patrons over on Patreon. If you feel like you're able to contribute just a few dollars a month to support these videos and the work that I'm doing, there's a link in the video description which will take you there. And if just at the moment you don't feel able to sign up for a monthly subscription but you do feel able to chuck just a couple of dollars my way i also have a link to a buy me a coffee page where you can buy me a coffee to keep me awake while i do all this test work i'd really really appreciate it if you check those out and then come straight back for the conclusions so let me give you my conclusions on this walks now avatar hd system my thoughts are that this is a system that is really getting quite good now with the latest firmware update and has an enormous amount of potential. It's important, I think, to remind everyone that the chipsets in this Avatar HD system are more modern and more capable than the chipset in the DJI FPV system. It supports H.265 video encoding rather than H.264 and it's a newer chipset and it's built by the same people who make the chipset for the DJI FPV system. So hardware wise, this system definitely has the potential to be phenomenally capable going forward. In terms of image quality and detail, I would say that having carefully looked for several hours now at these two systems side by side, I would say that actually they transmit about the same amount of detail, about the same amount of image quality between both systems. The critical difference is that DJI focus mode concentrates the detail, concentrates the image quality in the center of the frame. Whereas the walk snail avatar system kind of spreads the detail out more uh, evenly across the frame. And this gives the DJI system a benefit, a, an advantage in terms of perceived image quality, because as humans, we're more sensitive to image quality in the center of our field of vision. So if the walk snail team can copy or implement their own version of focus mode where they give us more detail in the center of the image and sacrifice detail preferentially at the edges, then we will see, I think, a big jump in perceived image quality from the system. So I really hope that they see this video, I'm gonna send them a link to it and implement that feature, that focus mode. 
Another area where the walk snail system has an advantage is in the 1080p60 mode. Having that extra resolution at 1080 really does give additional detail in certain parts of the image, particularly when flying slowly, and it does outpace the DJI system there. If we talk now about areas where the walk snail system can focus on improving, I think really one of the main ones is just in the quality of the sensor in the camera that they use in the system. And this has been an area where the DJI system has always had an advantage over all its competitors, is that DJI FPV camera produces such a good image to start with, and we saw that right at the start of the video. If the walk snail system can find a camera with a similar sensor of a similar quality, that's going to make a huge difference to the amount of detail and color information that the system has got to work with. And I think my final piece of feedback is that it would be really nice to see onboard DVR onto an SD card with the walk snail system. Although the DJI SD card logging doesn't work very reliably for me at all, and it's not really a usable feature, for lots of pilots, it is something that they use, enjoy, and rely upon quite a lot. So I think having an SD card option for the walk snail system moving forward would also be a huge benefit. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. Please take that extra second to hit the like button, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and if you feel like it, I'd really appreciate you checking out that buy me a coffee link or my Patreon so that you can help support more videos like this one. That's all I have for now. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.